so you can see the queen's large one in the center there. They have a few larvae, not many. That's the thing, this queen only lays about three, four eggs at a time. They have about three, four larvae. And uh, that's it, like, they wait till they're, uh, till they're fully developed before she lays more eggs. So she takes forever. She never always has a steady supply of eggs or a steady pile of larvae and, and a steady pile of pupae, anything like that. Um, she's always just doing one clutch at a time. So this is a harvester ant. They have seeds. You can see those are Popeye, or sorry, poppy seeds there in the corner. Uh, these seeds here are like fennel seeds. They brought all those seeds down there. They brought, this is a whole pile of seeds too. You can see one is germinating there a little bit. They are in, uh, this is from Tar Heel Ants. They're in a four by eight inch nucleus. That's what it's called. There's the outworld there. Uh, that's grass seed. That's just caught in there with sugar, sugar water. Same with that test tube. That's uh, all sugar water in there. Then they get their water from um, this nest mate. That's what they're called here at Tar Heel Ants, you fill that with water and then uh, they can get water from inside. It has a screen there. So they can get water from there and they always bring their seeds there and stick their seeds to the end for some reason. And uh, yeah, at first I thought uh, this might be too big for them, but uh, really I found that, you know, it doesn't really, really seem to matter what, what size Yeah, I found it doesn't really matter what size formicarium you use because um, they always find the top. Uh, I was kind of forced to put it in this because this is one of the first formicariums that I bought uh, before I knew how slow some colonies grow. And I really didn't know how slow this one grew. And I've had this one, you know, pretty much the longest. So I figured... Uh, it would be filling this up. This is double-sided, too. Let's spin this around. They're not in this side yet. I've uh, I blocked that off. So this thing is actually quite quite big. It's the biggest one I have. Um, like I said, this I just started ant keeping last year, so I didn't know much about it. And you know, when you first start out, you see something like this, and and you don't think it's that big. But uh, then when you realize, oh, it takes years to fill it up. But, um, no, they do fine in there. As you can see, uh, that's a water tower there. Everything they're on is a dish that's filled, filled with water. So they're all hanging out there, and uh, they make it to the top. They, all of those seeds they brought down themselves. Them fruit flies, which they take infrequently. I give them fruit flies every two days but they seem to take it, I don't know, once a week, if that. So yeah, 50 workers, let's move on. This is my uh, Tetramorium SPE colony. They're in a uh, Caesta, also from Tar Heel Ants. Uh, I caught this queen myself. June 2016, so I've had them for a year and a half now. Uh, I never had any problems with any of these. Um, I don't know how many ants are in here. Several hundred. They have filled up this entire side. Big time.
I've only let them have one side here. And again, I put this queen in here when she had about five workers. So they started just occupying this, this space in here and uh, now they've occupied every space. This is three-sided, but I haven't let them in any of the other sides yet. So uh, this is their second growing season and uh, th this Tetramorium colony grows absolutely insanely fast. This is where they keep their larvae. I saw the queen. Once a few weeks ago. And other than that, I, I never, never ever see her. I saw her last year the entire time. I was just looking here and she'd be in there. But now you'll never see her. She's somewhere in there. They also tunnel in there too. Which is driving me nuts. The queen right there. No. So yeah, they usually keep the larvae here. And then they bring, when they go in their cocoon stage, these guys don't do pupae. They bring their cocoon stage here. I'm trying to keep it's moving a lot because I'm zoomed in so much. But yeah, this colony, no problem. Hibernation, no problem. Never had any accidents with them. Like, they just produce so fast. It's incredible. I bet you, um, next year they'll probably fill up this entire thing. They'll probably have this side filled up and the next side filled up. Also, I'm just about to put these in hibernation beginning of hibernation i always start them off you know just a few degrees cooler than room temperature then i move it down then i move it down then i move it down until they're in full hibernation mode so i want to give them lots of food you know so they can feed everyone whatever but yeah what i do with these fruit flies is uh i freeze them first so then it's so easy to uh, just dump them in here. Just watch these guys for a minute. Yep, they're going to be eating good. That is for sure. Incredible growth on them. Alright, moving on. This is my Lacey's Neo Niger. Got her June 2016. Um, no, I bought her June 2016. She was already a year old. So these ants, they need to hibernate before they lay any eggs. So this colony is two and a half years old. But uh, I've had a lot of problems with this colony. Um, she probably has 50 workers now. 
but uh, I'm constantly taking uh, workers from her and pupae from her because uh, I'm always doing Lacey's Claviger uh, Parasitic Queen experiments, right? So I always need workers for that. So this isn't a true representation of, of what she would have. And last hibernation, um, I kind of slacked off a bit the last couple months of their hibernation. And uh, I didn't keep their water tower that's in there hydrated so when i took her out of hibernation i have a video of it too when i took her out of hibernation every single one of her workers was dead every single larvae every pupae every egg whatever was in there was dead and she was just barely barely clinging to life so she's up to 50 now this summer this growing season but like I said, I've also been taking pupae from her. So she'd probably have, you know, maybe 60, 70 ants. But if, if everything didn't die, she'd probably have, you know, a couple hundred. She'd probably be, you know, somewhere around these guys. Maybe not exactly matching how many they have, but uh, she'd be up there. That's for sure. She lays a lot of eggs at a time. That's all a pile of eggs right there. So you can see, like, she lays dozens of eggs at a time. They got some fruit flies in there. So what are these guys in? These guys are in a Tar Heel Ants. Inception chamber. Here's a worker again uh, bringing a fruit fly. I just dumped a whole bunch of fruit flies in there as well. And he'll go get another one. That's another thing I noticed too. Like, there's so few ants that actually work. And you'll see the ones that are working. Like, they do all the work. There'll be like 50 ants, but only like six of them are actually working. And they're going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Bringing in food. Uh, moving larvae, moving eggs, moving pupae, while other ones are like doing nothing. They're they're running back and forth, not carrying anything, or they're just whatever. They're just doing nothing. But you'll you'll see that one ant will bring in like twenty fruit flies to feed the whole colony, while the rest of them do nothing. Like there he is again. He's got another one, and he'll probably. Uh, He'll bring a ton of these in. And there looks like there's only a couple working at that. But there he is. He's the efficient one, you know? He's the one that knows. That's the same thing I find when I do my uh, parasitic queen experiments. I have to go through so many ants before I find ones that'll actually, like, look after larvae, look after eggs. Not completely agitate the queen. All right, guys, I'm going to end this video 